Yep. Hey, security peeps, we are live with another edition of Breaking into Cybersecurity. It is CISO Thursdays. Woo -woo. We have guests. We have guests. We are so excited. So I'm Renee Small, cybersecurity super recruiter, helping awesome leaders hire great talent. I'm seeing people from YouTube, which is reminding me, hey, y'all, from Sean, reminding me, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Subscribe, subscribe. Um, so we will go around the virtual room. James Azar, introduce yourself, sir. Hello, everyone. Siso and host of the CISO Talk and Cyber Hub podcast. Awesome sauce. Miss Naomi Buckwalter, the Naomi, the awesome Naomi. Oh, Lord. Hey, everyone. Naomi Buckwalter here. I'm here to help you break into cybersecurity. I love this community, and I want to help. Woo -woo. And the infamous and awesome and amazing Alan Alford. Hey, guys. Alan Alford here, host of the Cyber Ranch podcast and uh, general purpose CISO at large. Awesome. So we have a wonderful topic <laughs> we're going to kick off today. There's a lot of uh, a lot of uh, drama, I will say, that went on on LinkedIn. <laughs> went on LinkedIn. LinkedIn went from LinkedIn to drama in in like very very fast. <laughs> this was like social media madness. So LinkedIn was on fire this weekend. Somebody made a post and talked about internship programs and how difficult it was and how in his organization it was really hard and how every organization can't have an internship program because it's not as easy as people are saying. Um, and so Naomi was tagged. We went, you know, had this big conversation. But ultimately, you know, we wanted to all talk about it because obviously this is breaking into cybersecurity we collectively believe in internships. Um, I quite frankly wrote a comment saying, I don't even understand why it's not the norm. As far as I'm concerned, every organization, big or small, should have an internship program, bringing in interns consistently because that is truly what I've seen in all the organizations that I've ever worked in and worked for and consulted for. It's always around growing that pipeline of talent. Um, and that's how you get your early entry talent is through internship programs. So I will let the lady of the day <laughs> kick it off with this topic and talk about, let's talk about internships, you know, what you've seen be successful and, you know, how we can continue to help grow talent through internship programs. So, Naomi? Yeah, I love this topic. And, uh, you know, there was a little bit of drama, I will say. Uh, you know, I definitely appreciate the conversation. So I'm not at all sad that that happens. Um, what I am more concerned about is this idea of shutting down people's thoughts just because they don't agree with them. So let's be kind to each other. Let's have a public square in which we can debate in a healthy manner, in a healthy manner, and have productive conversations because that's really what we're here for is just to debate debate ideas. Uh, so the idea here is to bring on interns and what are the pros and cons of that? So I would like to spend this time here with the group here just to talk about what we've seen, how we've seen it do work well, what are some pros and cons. So I personally was an intern way back in the day, 1997. Uh, I won't even say how old I am. Yeah, like way old in the day. I had three internships by the time I graduated college and I was able to get an entry level role. And I see, I feel the, the need for that is still here. There's no change in, in anything that we've done uh, different. And so the two decades since then, you know, I'm seeing fewer and fewer internships um, for cybersecurity, but I don't know why. I think there's there's a need for them. There's a really good reason why we have internships. It's to build a pipeline of next generation cybersecurity professionals. But I'm seeing this whole movement against it. And I want to bring that up as a conversation point because it's important to have. And I, I think the more we talk about this and just bat out the ideas of why it's a good thing to have, I think more people will be convinced to start their own internship programs. Awesome points. I, I'm curious as to, um, and we'll go around in a second, but I'm curious as to why people don't want it. But I know we'll get to that. Uh, we'll get to that afterwards. So James, you um, want to jump in? Why they don't want it. That's a very interesting question. You, you, it's very hard to understand why people don't want interns. 
what I find very fascinating is people who start an internship program don't want to pay their interns, want their interns to do all the complex work that you would put on a job description for being four or five years worth of experience, and then wonder why no intern wants to come into an internship program and say, well, intern programs don't work. Let's be realistic about interns. Interns are people. And yes, they don't have a lot of experience, but they still need to be paid. Can we all agree on that? Oh, yeah. Great. Wonderful. So now that we agree that interns should be paid and that you're bringing in interns to learn, that's where it all starts. So you're bringing in interns to really understand and kind of help you in support of your program for all kinds of different roles within your organization, whether it be someone to shadow one of your analysts, whether it be someone to work with your red team, offer a different point of view, solve different problems, not always run and grab you coffee, although they are great at getting coffee and lunch. <laughs> and there's no one better to send a pickup Uber Eats from than an intern because they care about the warmth of the food, right? So they rush up. They're like, I don't want James's Chipotle to be too cold when he gets it. So <laughs> that matters. But all joking aside, they're wonderful assets because they come in and the beauty of an, a good intern program is if you empower them enough, they're going to inject a different school of thought that maybe some of your old school people in your organizations have gotten too complacent with, and they're going to rile up the crowd and make everyone better. Alan? Yeah, so I'm going to be devil's advocate for a little bit. I'm going to entertain a couple of the reasons why you might not want an intern, and then I'm going to get into why I, I think you do. Um, so, so the two reasons I think that are the most compelling I've heard for not having an intern program. Uh, reason number one is these are folks that are generally shorter term, uh, very junior, very new to the field. And do you want them to have the most sensitive keys to the kingdom, right? In other words, do you want somebody who's maybe going to be with you for a year and is very junior and hasn't established that credibility in the field yet to have the keys to your kingdom? That's that's critical response number one that I, I, I feel like has at least some merit. And then number two is back to that one year turnaround. Interns very often you invest in them and they bail, right? We all know this. So um I think that one's got some merit too, but here's what I would say in response to both of those. You're trusting the keys to your kingdom to anybody who might be short term. You could have the most senior person come in and only be with you for six months and take off. And now you're like, Ooh, was that guy really a fan of the company? Was he actually an insider plant from some other competitor? You're never going to know that risk is there for senior positions. I don't think that you can argue intern versus senior somehow one more than the other is going to, is going to pin you in that corner. And then as to the turnaround piece, it's really interesting. Um, and this is back to James's idea, like, like question number one, are you going to pay these people? Well, question number two, are you going to pay them after that first year as somebody who's got a year of experience? Or are you going to keep trying to pay them that first one year intern salary? In other words, if you invest in these guys over time, I think you keep them over time. And I know there's plenty of internship and apprenticeship programs out there that even work specifically designed to give you like I just I just talked to the women in cybersecurity group um, and had them on my show a little while ago. And they have an apprenticeship program that basically guarantees you at a minimum two years of engagement from each of these apprentices coming out of the chute. And so, again, it's something that can be overcome and can be dealt with. So those are the best two arguments I've heard against. And I've just pretty casually, I think, refuted both of them. So that's where I'm at. Yeah, I uh, I just want to join, I, you know, like Naomi and Alan, thank you for that, because I'm, I'm totally confused as to why people <laughs> wouldn't want it. It's so it's so foreign to me as to why they wouldn't. Um, so I, uh, like Naomi, started my career through an internship program, um, helped that group hire interns into like when I was coming out. So mine was a formal, you know, Fortune 500 six week during the summer internship and, and through my junior year of college, got an offer from that company due to being an intern. That was the purpose of it, right? So they wanted to bring in early career talent, went to certain universities, plucked us out, put us in there at the end of it, got sent, you know, gave us offers and then started my career there as well as other people helped other folks do the same, help, you know, my leader do the same thing. And for, I mean, years and years have done similar in organizations where actually leaders come to the HR saying, hey, you know, are we having an internship program? Can I have an intern? You know, what do I need to do to get an intern? It's usually 
them wanting to bring in that new talent, wanting to bring people in. Um, the largest company, some of the largest companies that I've been with, and I understand large companies are different because they, you know, this is kind of like a consistent theme with them where they're looking to, this is like a core way of bringing talent in. Um, the expectation is pretty low because <laughs> you're coming out of school and you don't know what you're doing. You know, that's it. And is there a way to not give someone keys to the castle? Is there a way to have someone buffer over them before you give them the, you know, before you press the button, someone can do that. Isn't that what you do when you train all staff? So it's like, it's actually quite bizarre that this A, isn't happening more and that B, people are pushing against it. Um, interns, to all of your points, don't, are not supposed to stay long-term. That's not the purpose. The purpose is to give the person the opportunity to learn about the company and learn what it's like to be working in an organization. I never thought it was a long-term thing. That's not what internship programs typically are. So maybe there's some kind of, um, maybe there needs to be an education around this is what an internship program looks like. This is what the top ones look like. You know, people have been doing this for years. It's never really a long-term thing. It's to give a project, like a, an, a start and an end um, to young people, typically young people, but now we know people of all ages and, you know, career changers. Um, so yeah, this is, uh, it, it's it's very interesting to me. Um, and, and to be honest with you, it, it was interesting to me with breaking into cybersecurity. That's why we started this podcast when people weren't getting jobs. So, <laughs> you know, being right back here again with this internship program situation is is just quite odd. You um, want to debunk it all together, the idea of short term that they're only there temporary. And okay. and the, I've, we've got two other CISOs on today's show. So this is going to be great because I'll ask them both the same thing. When you buy technology, we all know that tech has an expiration date. And you kind of write an expiration date on that tech, right? So the, the whole idea of an intern's going to come and he's going to get keys to the kingdom. Uh, who gives interns keys to the kingdoms? I don't know. Maybe SolarWinds did according to their, you know. <laughs> of, uh, I knew someone was going to say that. Yeah. Um, apparently SolarWinds does that. Um, and then they blame that person for it. You know, that has nothing to do with corporate culture at all at that point, right? Um you know, and then and then our buddy Chris gets a, gets a sanctioned for for actually pointing out the obvious. So there's there's that challenge right there. And I'll I'll say it how it is, Alan. Welcome, welcome. You, you haven't known me for long, but you know, if something is black, we're gonna say it's black. You know, we're not gonna mess around with it. And 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 right on. And I think that's that's one of the challenges with this. But the the other part. And, and I think the bigger piece of internships that, that's often being overlooked by a lot of people with that kind of mindset is not the re-education purpose of it. It's just the idea that they can't find that talent, so they go against it. Or you get one bad experience and you go completely against it because you hear a war story. And you're going to have war stories with interns because you know why? I'll tell you why. Have you met anyone in college? <laughs> You're going to have war stories with human beings. I mean, my business is hiring. Like everyone doesn't work out. Right. How many, how many experienced engineers have we interviewed and tried to hire that will show up for orientation, will be in the company for two, three weeks. And then you get an email at the end of the business day that says, Hey, thanks so much for the opportunity, but I don't think I'm the right fit for this. And then they're just gone. Mm -hmm. or they don't show up at all and they yeah. cost you a lot more money <laughs> yeah. and they cost you a lot more money than an intern yeah they do here's what i'm thinking though i don't understand this whole part if i take an intern and i grow them in the way that i want them to and show them what good information security practice looks like that to me is way more valuable than taking someone that's like a unknown black box and i don't know who trained them i don't know what they're going to be doing you know like and yeah i'm going to have to vet them but there's that always that like unknown quantity kind of feeling where like i don't know if you're going to be kind of rude to my customers internal customers i don't know if you're going to be giving bad advice i would rather take someone brand new who already has a comfort level with technology and can put things together they can think critically and think outside the box that's what i want i can make i can make something happen with that i can train that I think I'm a pretty good teacher and that's why I'm putting myself out there. Take the challenge. Like if you feel like you are a good teacher, teach, 
it's it's a good thing for you. It's a great thing for your career. Teach someone the way you know how good information security practice looks like. And then you you send them out into the world when you're done with them. You're like, right. you are now my disciple. Go forth and do good information security. That is the <laughs> entire point. That is the entire point. Like, well, <laughs> we, need a, Amen, we need a community. Hallelujah. Yeah. We need a community <laughs> and a like just we just need more teamwork here. And so if we are fighting each other against little stupid things about who can be in security and who can't you know, that whole gatekeeping and elitism thing, we're only hurting ourselves. Yeah, And, and the and, cyber criminals are laughing at us. And to cyber that teaching point, go ahead, Alan. I was going to say to that point about the teaching, like there are things you can teach and there are things that have to be there. And when you're interviewing an intern, interestingly, all you need from them is the things that have to be there. And the rest is, can be taught, right? In other words, you can have the most senior uh, security engineer on the planet. And if that person doesn't have that natural desire to tinker and, and, and understand and dig into root cause, if that person doesn't have that natural desire to, you know, if they don't have the evil bit and know how to flip that bit and act like the bad guy and do the bad guy stuff, if they don't have that ability to get along with others in a general sense of, hey, we're all part of a working team here, that's stuff that can't be taught, Right. So you can have somebody who's got the qualifications, got the years under their belt, got the experience, but lacks those things. And you're going to want that person off your team as quickly as possible before they become toxic for the rest of the team, right? That's number one. Number two, with an intern, it's easy to suss out and find that they have those things. Do you have the attitude and the aptitude? Do you have the evil bit? Do you have the ability and, and that desire and drive to really get to dig in and do root cause? If you have all those things, I can teach you the tech stack. Yeah. I can teach you the company. I can teach you all the rest of the stuff you need to know to be successful, but give me those basics and that's far more important. So to me, internship is all about starting with those basics that are so fundamental that they have to be there. And, and that's what you're looking for with an intern. You don't need the rest. The rest can be piled on. And I agree. I don't think those fundamentals are technology at all. Like mm -hmm. if you have a comfort level using a computer, you kind of have the idea of what a computer is and what the internet is. You can add into the details. You can say, this is what DNS is. This is the TCIP stack. This is what the OSI model is. You can add to that. People are smart. They will pick it up. They are not dumb at all. Trust me, these, these people coming out of school, they've been around tech their entire life. It is second nature to them. They, they, they put together things way quicker than I did at their age, I'm telling you, because I remember a time when I had to learn how to type, when I had to learn how to like use a computer. I'm telling you, folks, these people have it ingrained in them from the beginning and they are good. And so if you just give them a chance and teach them the way it should be done, they're going to be fine. And that's my argument. So okay. let's can, can we can we just for a second, can we address internships from a sports perspective for a second? Because I think that would translate best for anyone. Sure. for a lot of people is because I saw Zoe's comment. I'm glad you brought that up. Renee, my sister from another mister. You're reading my <laughs> mind. All right. I love it. We're like communicating, but we're not. It's no. awesome. It's, all right. So here's the deal. If you look at it from a team sports perspective, we, we look at professional sports and a lot of times they're, they're bringing in draft picks, right? I mean, the NFL draft is like a full fledged event and, and it's a multi-million dollar event for the league. And it brings in a ton of talent and not every pick always works out. I think one of the challenges that we see with a lot of CISOs when it comes to interns is they don't get involved with the local universities. They're not really looking and they're not scouting talent. They're not looking at programs that produce really good talent to come to your team so you can go out there and be incentivized to get them early. And I'm not saying you have to do that to have a successful internship program, but if you know, if we look at risk, because we're all, if you're in security, we, we live by risk, like Every decision we make in life has a risk calculation to it, right? So if we look at that risk calculation alone, so if you want to reduce your risk for a successful internship program and say, these people are short term, or I don't know if I can trust them with the keys to the kingdom and all that other stuff, then just take them to where you should and go to the local, go to a bunch of local universities that are around where your, where your office is at engage with the professors, engage with some of the students, go lecture, ask the professor if you can come and speak to his class for half an hour about something, open a discussion, and then go, you know what, there might be some talent here. This probably reduces my risk in an internship program, and I'm really going to get involved with this. 
Because look at like Brian Lozada over at HBO Max. I mean, that guy's a superstar. He goes through interns. Like he just, he does real good internship programs over at HBO. He does. Like shout out to Brian. There's so many of them. There's a top 100 list. I did research. I was on with um, my buddy the other day, Namdi Oswagu, on his show, Tech Behind Fintech. And we talked about, since this is intern season, right? There's a whole season around this because this is what companies do. It's intern season. And we and I did some research around top internships. And I gave stories around, you know, you don't have to be the most. The company doesn't have to pay the most. The company, you know, just needs to have a compelling message. And to James's point, to all of your points, but really James's point just now, you have students that are begging for the experience. I mean, everyone here, the reason why we're all here is people are continuously begging for the experience. It's supposed to be experiential. A couple of weeks during the summer or a couple of, co you know, during the semester where it is a project, it's fixed, it has a start, it has an end. The student, I remember in mine, we had to do a presentation at the end of it. Um, and I was in a, it, I, my major in, in undergrad was information system. So it was a project management type of internship. And at the end, you know, it was a start and end. And then at the end, you gave a presentation to like all of leadership because they want to see your presentation skills. And they helped us with that because we were college students. I mean, it's just bizarre that you would have a situation where you're looking for a ton of experience and people to even think about staying around. I mean, PwC, and this is, you know, big, huge conglomerates, right? But they, their internship program is, folk, they know that, A, they hire probably a couple thousand interns every year. And then they anticipate giving a certain percentage of those people offers. And then they anticipate how many, per, what percentage is going to accept. And then they anticipate that in a year to two years, how many will drop off? So they have like an inverted triangle. Okay, we're going to hire 5,000. We're offering 4,000. We know 3,000 will take it. 2,000 will end up with us, you know, and ultimately 500 will get to senior manager. Like it's, it's baked. It's out there. And you, you don't have to be PwC. You can do that very small component um, and exp setting expectations, partnering with universities. I mean, this is all baked up, done, been doing, been happening for years. <laughs> like, it's just. We're doing this exact model right now. Like, like my day job, this is exactly it. We're partnered with a local university. We're good friends with a local professor. We met with him, got his best of breed folks. We've got an intern on my team that I just extended, uh, uh the internship. Like I just offered him yesterday. Let's, let's drag this out all the way till you graduate. Like I'm, I'm willing to keep going the distance if you are. And he's got another potential offer like i may lose the guy i don't know please don't leave yeah. um, but um but you know i've extended the offer and i want to i want i want to keep working with him it's working out and and you know the whole keys to the kingdom argument right i didn't give him the keys keys but he's got a couple of keys sure and i trust the guy he's good he's eager he's hungry he wants to work he's putting good work out like let's keep doing this man that's the purpose of the whole thing that is the purpose it, it, again I, I'm going to put some comments up, but I'm actually baffled. When I saw all this stuff going on, I'm like, who, why, why wouldn't you want something? It's because companies want that immediate ROI. It always comes back to what can you do for me kind of thing. But you're not looking at the bigger picture. You, <laughs> cybersecurity professional, are overworked. You are stressed and you are understaffed. Why is that? It's because there's not enough mid-level to senior level professionals in our profession. Why is that? That's because there's not enough entry-level professionals. How do you fix that? You need to train entry-level professionals and bring them up into that mid-level and senior level area. So, inverted did, you practice, did you practice that? No, I always that was like really <laughs> smooth. That was good. <laughs> Bam, bam, bam. Naomi's like, bam, bam, bam. I She's like, told you people. I told you. I <laughs> this is on a PowerPoint you. presentation <laughs> I sent you last week on Tuesday. My intern starts. Uh, it's today. 20 years of talk. rage. It's 20 my years talk. of rage. And I'm telling you, it's only really coming out this since this past pandemic because I've been practicing information security, not until this previous pandemic where or this current pandemic. I lifted up my head. I was like, what's going on in LinkedIn? Right. And it's only been a year where I'm I'm noticing all these people desperate for a job and I started taking on more mentees and everything. I'm like, wait, what's going on here? Because when I started, everything was cool. 
and everyone would hire entry level people. What happened in 20 years? And something changed where I'm like, what? And, and so my entire world just got turned upside down. And now it's 20 years of rage coming out right here, here on Cicel <laughs> Thursdays. And I apologize <laughs> to the listeners here, but I am, I am pretty much at the end of my rope when I see people arguing against things that they have been given themselves. It is yeah. hypocritical, it's disingenuous, and it's wrong. How did so anyone can, can else I, start? So, so let, me tell you one thing. let me tell you one thing. Any person who says that the company cares about immediate ROI, and that's why they don't have an internship program, that's where I disagree with you a little bit, Naomi, is the fault of that leader. If you can't go to the company and show that an intern is positive ROI for your organization, then maybe you're not in the right position to begin with. Yeah, yeah, Peter I mean, Principal. Yeah, I don't yeah. think engineers make great leaders. Point blank. <laughs> that's, that's Point blank. <laughs> okay, comments, comments, because there's so many good ones. I'll start at the top. Sean has uh, said, hey, uh, he, he's talking about the post. People took it too seriously. Zoe makes a good point here. I've been seeing people say that cybersecurity isn't entry level. So that's why they're not considering interns. Uh, there's a beginning to everything. Everything's entry level. I don't care what field you're in. I mean, yes, there's expertise like, oh my God, there's people on my team that know stuff I will never know. They've been in it and doing it for so long, specific to this one niche in cyber. Um, but everything's entry level. I, I, I disagree with that one. Yep. Well, d d you know, it's like not everyone is a 50 year old doctor with 20 years of experience. When you go to a <laughs> right? hospital. I'll tell you one thing. I went to get my COVID shot and it was by young medics. They were 19 years old. One of them, the one who gave my wife her COVID shot on Monday of this week, he was like, yeah, I just, you know, finished uh, over at Fort Bragg and, and I'm here now. And I'm like, when'd you finish AIT and, and, and med training? And he goes, just like last month. And I'm like, okay. You, he was All giving right, shots to oranges needle. last week. Yeah. So you bring, up doctors. you bring up doctors as the example. This is a very interesting statistic. My brother-in-law is a doctor, and I just learned this, and this blew me away. The statistics for malpractice are higher as the doctors get older, not mm. the other way around. No way. Because when you're the fresh, ones out that are fresh out of school. fresh out of school have just learned the newest techniques yes. and the newest, like, oh, yeah. yeah, we used to do it that way. Now we're doing it this way because there's a reason. Oh, wow. And the kids out of school, the kids out of school – are actually doing better and practicing better medicine oh than the guy God, that's been in the yeah, field for 30 yeah, because wow. the sustaining credits and things you do to maintain aren't the same thing as a full-blown education you just received uh, well, to, like to James's point up your last month. education credits with your CISP, right? <laughs> so you go and attend the conference where you hear seven vendors pitch you, right? And you get your CPEs and you go, well, I'm good for the year. Here we go. I are smarter. Right, <laughs> and I've got enough swag for all of my kids' stockings for Christmas. Wait, so you're, you're so you're saying the breaches of today are probably more at the fault of the experienced professionals? <laughs> Not if you ask SolarWinds CEO. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Oh god! So I I kind of feel the same way. The people entering in now are intelligent. They're thirsty. They have what it takes. But we like the old the old guard. I will say the people in my cohort. We somehow think we're smarter, right? Or we somehow think we're geniuses. Or we created this whole thing. That is so not true. I use frameworks that other people make. I use protocols other people make. I I've barely made anything in my entire life. I have no <laughs> skills to build things. Like I can only consume at this point, where I just use things and I put things together. That's what I do, and that's what cybersecurity really is. We build and stand on the shoulders of giants. I don't get it. Bizarre. Ben says, what are we ranting about? <laughs> ben, yeah. we've been doing it for the I'm last 26 ranting. minutes, buddy. Where are you, Ben? Well, no, this is early on, and I think he was joking. Like, he knows what we're ranting. <laughs> so Joseph says, hello, everyone. Just tuned in. Nice to meet you. Hi, nice Joseph. You, Joseph. Hello, Joseph. Uh, let's see. Alfred Green says, interns of today will be successors of tomorrow. If not, we have failed. Yep. Amen. We, Hallelujah. Yep. That's investing in ourselves as an industry, not just ourselves as the individual hiring employers or as the individual companies, right? And that's that's back to that short-sighted thinking that Naomi was talking about. We have to help all of us if we're going to help any of us. Yeah, if you don't if you don't want interns, how about you don't have babies? You know, because they're dirty and messy and they mess up a lot and they make you run and they cost yeah. a lot of money. I will say though, not everyone is meant to teach. Like everyone was once a student, but not everyone is going to be a teacher. So you everyone. have to have the mind of and heart of a teacher first in order to do this right. Like I don't want a jerk off 
like somebody that I know <laughs> to be leading an internship program because you're not going to be good at it. You're going to mess up people and you're going to disenfranchise a whole set of people like get go away like get out of our way we only want the people who are actually decent enough and kind enough as humans to be the teachers that we want yeah and you know sometimes that happens i mean i remember my internship program and i think there were four managers and one was not the teacher type um but the other three were you know one was just the executive so you know i saw her during the shishi lunches and stuff and then the other two were like my day to day and we had a little cohort and there were four or five of us doubled up in cubes. And I mean, it's just, again, unreal that people don't want to make this happen. Okay. Clinton says, hello to the crew. Welcome, Alan Alford. Sean says, gain hands-on experience. He's right. Kirby smiley face. Sean says, people need to understand life is about taking risks, win some, lose some. And I don't see the huge risk factor with inter. I think yeah. Naomi and I were talking about this and Alan, I'll jump, let you jump in in a second. We were like, they're the lowest risk employees around. They have a start, an end, no, typically no benefits, typically a fixed hourly rate. I mean, you can't get less risk <laughs> with this individual. Yeah. Keep the keys away, give them the baby. Yeah. Then I, my intern gets no keys. I don't know what people are talking about. Right. She's writing no She's writing incident response playbooks. That's what she's doing. And she's shadowing me for the rest of the time. That's all. That's all I want, you know, and that's good enough. Yeah, it, it's about, you know, which keys do you hand over? And, and yeah. I'll tell you all a true story from uh, way back when I was a young, 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 young fellow. And I worked at a manufacturing place that did uh, hardware, the motherboards and things like that. They had a janitor. And one of the employees happened to be working very late and happened to notice that the janitor was going through everybody's trash cans and pulling the papers out and dumping the rest in the trash, but saving the papers. Mm. They did some digging. Turns out the janitor had a PhD and worked for a competitor. Oh, wow. So you want to talk about the risks you're taking. Like you're worried about your intern. Freaking the janitor can bust you. Yeah, I mean, right. the risk is there yeah. no matter what, yeah. right? Talk yeah. about an insider threat. Wow. Yeah. 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 I mean, what and what a brilliant play. No one's no one's gonna suspect the guy that's dumping trash cans into, right. the, into the thing mm -hmm. and you know, into the trolley and moving yeah. on down the road, right? Happens to pull the papers out. Yeah. It's you know, I mean, no one's gonna suspect that. So the it's, risk is there no matter what. There's always risk. Don't don't pin brilliant. it on internships. I yeah. love that janitor. <laughs> uh, that's a great yeah. story, by the way, Alan. That is a wonderful yeah. story. That's awesome. Yeah, that's really cool. I mean, it's illegal, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Willing guinea pig for aspiring mentors and trainers 20 hours a week. So David wants in. He wants in to be a 20-hour a week person. Kirby says, what about the concept of just helping someone get a start and give them exposure that you can't get in the classroom? Alan. Right, real quick, I was going to say, David, hit me up on LinkedIn. I might have another internship opening up. David. Um, so you know hit me up on LinkedIn. Hit up nice. Alan. Alan Alfred. Yep. I've been All right, now Kirby. Great conversations with David behind the scenes. Awesome guy. So Kirby says, what about the concept of just helping someone get a start and give them exposure that you can't get in the classroom? That's the whole purpose of the internship. Yeah, my mm -hmm. first internship was how to show up on time, how to file a timesheet, whatever, like how to be a professional, how, <laughs> how to, to answer the phone, how to answer an email. Like it was very basic stuff that a 17 year old didn't know how to do. Like I needed to learn how to be a professional. That's what it was. And that's be on all, time and, and sit at a desk for 40 hours a week. That's what I learned. That's what internships are supposed yes. to be about. And it's supposed to be about showing you the culture of the company and saying, hopefully putting your best foot forward. I remember it was uh, it was funny. I went my undergrad was a business under my degree was in business. And a lot of my friends were finance majors and accounting majors. And a lot of them went to PwC and EY and Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley. And the 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 funny part that I learned afterwards is because the internship program was such a big boost to the company saying, oh, look at what we do and look at what you get to do, that it was a little bit of a, you know, it was a high when you were an intern, like, oh, I want to stay. <laughs> I want to come back. And then when you get there, you're working 80 hours a week as an investment banker and your head spinning, like, do I really want to do this? But the intern, the whole purpose of the internship program was like, show you a little bit of the culture, a little bit of what you would be as an analyst. Like, that's the purpose of it. It's not to grind you up, <laughs> you know, and yeah. put you out there with the keys. Mm -hmm. So I'll tell you one thing. We've brought in a bunch of interns and I, you know, I look at the disciplines they want to get into cyber. 
right? And I try to bring in interns their freshman year, like just as they're trying to study cyber. And I go, so what do you want to be? And they go, I want to be a red teamer. I'm like, wonderful. You get to go shadow red teamers for a week. And a week later, I go, so what do you think about being a red teamer? And I can't tell you how many people have said, I'm so glad I did this now. I don't want to be a red teamer. That's not for me. I may want to go something else. I'm thinking I want to be more on you know, the blue team side or I want to go into GRC or um, I might want to be an analyst or you know, write policies or you know, cloud, whatever. And so people really do like the other aspect of interns is our job when we bring these people in is, is to almost help identify whether or not what they're really going for is what they're a right fit for right and so that that's the other aspect of it where you know that's something you you take into account when you bring in an intern yeah and in cyber we don't just need red teamers and blue teamers and purple teamers and analysts and engineers and architects one of the roles i want to build as a CISO is is an internal cyber marketing role someone whose entire job is to market cyber to our internal customers so i need someone who likes cyber enough but also has the personality of Naomi, you know, to um, to be able to go out and evangelize cyber in an organization. And a lot of times we see like this be the awareness directors, you know, like the people who run your cyber awareness program. I actually did a survey and found out that people hated our awareness program because they were the guy that would be in the break room going like, <laughs> you click the link, didn't you? <laughs> you click the link and you're like, no, no, you're creating antagonism towards security. Don't. You need to do internal marketing. You've got to win people over. You've got to have people come to you and feel comfortable to go, I'm getting a lot of these suspicious emails. I'm not sure where I got them from and are willing to sit with your teams and go like, okay, I've attended these four events. I've been on a bunch of these calls. And so forth. So we understand also where the threat's coming from because it's a threat against the company. You're not being targeted just because of anything else. So you've got to open that up. It's, I don't know, it's it's fascinating to me when when people just look at interns and go like, uh, you know, they're here to, you know, just, you know, learn how to be professional. It's like help them build a career and and build new roles with these interns because we need those new roles. It's yep. bizarre, it's bizarre. Chris is sad that he can't be with us. But he could so. pop in and make a comment. Right, right. That job, that that work thing. That work I don't, thing. I don't feel that a pop in is fulfilling my needs. I don't feel nurtured. <laughs> <laughs> he invited Alan and then disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, John, you can see. <laughs> John De La Cruz says he is he loves what is happening right now. John, right you're, you're leaving John, John loves it because he saw me wear that shirt yesterday. Oh yes, he did. Are you gonna wear it today? Square. Oh, Ooh. I wore it last night. It was it was everything. It was everything <laughs> everyone thought it was, and then some. <laughs> it was so good. <laughs> so uh Chris says, hashtag liberal arts. Let's not go down that road. Hashtag my in <laughs> my, my intern starts Tuesday. Oh uh, she, yeah, liberal, she was awesome. undergrad right here. <laughs> I know I liberal know. arts was undergrad the major? right here. Was, was it a major? was it a bachelor of science in history? Bachelor that's a of thing. arts in liberal arts with mm. a focus on leadership, followed by a master's of science in information security. And blah, Thank blah, blah, you. Blah, blah. But my undergrad Thank is liberal. Otherwise, it'd be a barista at Starbucks right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm down with liberal arts. Liberal arts teaches you how to learn. Yeah, learn it's the love of learning. Exactly. That's I have right. an engineering. Love of learning doesn't get you paid in life. <laughs> it doesn't. Yeah, but my engineering degree only taught me how to take tests and pass them. Like I never learned how to be an engineer. Like it was the weirdest thing. I graduated college, computer engineering degree. Yeah, great. Now what? Like there was no help for me and I didn't know what to do with it. I ended up coding in Lotus Notes for two years. Like it was ridiculous. <laughs> and I can make a mean latte. So. <laughs> okay. okay, Manny says here, the soft skills and emotional intelligence are key. Amen. Uh, Amen. My, um, Zoe say cyber is a team sport, yep. in my opinion. So true. David Brin says, um, oh no, who is this? This is another is it, comment. Is it Vaughn? Uh, I don't know if it's Shady Dave. Is it Shady, Shady Dave? Dave? I don't think so. I'm not a regular <laughs> enough on this show. I need a cool nickname like Shady Dave. <laughs> you need to come more often, Alan. It's spicy. 
uh, Next Gen, she says, to me, it sounds like there hasn't been a lot of research into exactly how to progress an intern through a lot of companies and what to do when you want to keep them or when you don't. So uh, there has been a lot of research. I think the people who don't know just don't know because I used to put together these internship pl programs, plan these whole things out. They are well um, oil machines. Last year, I was working with a small company. They were able to hire a handful of interns. They had done it the year before they hired interns. You know, like it can be done at a huge scale. It can be done in a small scale. It's really around um, leadership saying, this is what we want and this is what we want to have happen, period. Getting, you know, going to colleges and if, if you walk into a classroom right now or virtual and say, who wants an internship? The whole class is going to put their hand up period. Like finding the people, getting them through the pipeline is not the, that's not the hard part. Okay. Let's see. Yeah. I, I've learned from hosting my podcast every time I think there's no research on the thing. Oh yeah. There's boatloads of research. Oh, I just research. don't know about it. <laughs> yeah, tons of research on internships, programs. What? Um, David says, I think industries also need to get away from the assumption or premise that an intern is only a recent college grad. People yes. with years of experience looking to pivot industries have those transferable skills you're looking for. I want to Amen. agree with that. I totally, totally agree with that, David. And um, I think we should do more to try to make that happen um, as well. Sean is laughing with us. Kalish says, I've heard that before, that attitude is the key, but never seen it in real life. And I think that's when <sighs> Naomi was making some comments um, earlier on. So... <sighs> I was going to say that's a lousy attitude if you don't think it's there in real life. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <sighs> we just need more people to be vocal about the chances they were given, you know, how, what background they had or didn't have when they were given that chance and who gave them that chance. Like, let's just tell our stories. So, I certainly didn't have a background. And I still got an internship. Like, that's what it should so be. Alan like. and I do that on our podcast. I think yep. simultaneously we both asked that question of the hmm. guests that we bring mm -hmm. on our show is mm -hmm. how'd you get started in cyber? Yep. Yeah. And I've, and there's no one uniform story. I've Ever. said that so many times. They're all different, yeah. 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 I've met so yeah. many people who, you know, what, some of them were just like, I was the guy that they said, we need someone to do this. And it was a security job. And all of a sudden they were, you know, mm -hmm. brought into the CISA role. Even if you look at, like, I'll give you a prime example. Um, I think he's the longest serving CISO today. Meaning this guy like literally went up through the ranks of his company for 28 years now is David Levin over at Rico. David Levin over at Rico started as an IT guy, worked his way up, and now he's their chief security officer, runs physical and cyber. He's been mm -hmm. doing that for, I think, like six, seven years, but in the same company, worked through every single position until he reached a CSO level. I did 15 at Polycom, same story. Yeah, Came, came in the door as an individual contributor and left as CISO. That's awesome. Like th those stories exist. Like people are out there doing amazing stuff. And, and, yeah. and David's also in like the Georgia National Guard and runs, uh, runs you know, some of the cyber programs here for the Georgia National Guard. And the, the Georgia National Guard actually won the Army National Guard, um, was able to build a dashboard for COVID to track COVID and so forth that was adopted nationwide. And that's the talent that exists right there that it's people amazing. don't even hear about. And that, that dashboard is now used by all 50 states, including the federal government, to track infections of COVID. Wow. Right on. Awesome. So Kalish says, for example, people hiring PMs have no idea what project management is. <laughs> <laughs> it tends to happen. David says, and if we don't call experienced individuals, uh, but those people would be willing for a part-time role to learn, um, then what do you call that? Is the internship the only pathway? So, you know, part-time volunteer, being parts of um, uh, professional organizations, you know, and, and David and, and Naomi talks about this all the time. And I preach it, too, because so many people are sitting in opportunities in companies right now. Many of you all, I know there's some people that are just not working at all, but many are working, just working in different um, areas. And Naomi talks about it a few weeks ago, raising your hand to be that cybersecurity champion for your team, your group. If you are in, you know, wherever you are, if you're in the accounting department, if you're in, you know, the customer service department, if you're in procurement, wherever you are, raising your hand and then volunteering and learning more and growing more um, 
I don't know any leader or anybody that turns down volunteers and free work and free <laughs> free hours from people. Mm -hmm. Like, who does that? Yep, you, absolutely. You know, yourself and out there. Go ahead, Alan. And back to the attitude aptitude thing we talked about, right? It's the exact same phenomenon. If if you've got 15 years under your belt doing, I don't care what, marketing, sales, pick some other department in the company I work for. If you've got 15 years of that, the odds are, to Naomi's point, professional communication, check. How to do an email, check. How to talk to a customer, check. You've got all these skills already, like a bunch of that basic stuff's there. Like, dude, I'm just going to start filling your head with cyber. Come on mm -hmm. over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Andy Murray says, intern programs need to be open to the broadest group possible, except part-time students, recent grads, boot camps, just accepting full-time college students will miss a huge chunk, chunk of talent. Agree with that as well. Um, but Lord, they're not even going after the traditional, <laughs> like, right. the Let's traditional start somewhere. way. It's like unreal. Uh, teaching interns could be the best way for experienced professionals to keep their skills sharp and keep the basics implemented. Yeah, we call this the protege effect. Anytime you teach somebody, that reinforces the learning for yourself. And uh, the best way to learn is to teach. I'm actually wondering, though, does the CISSP or any of the other major certifications have a requirement to teach? I'm starting to think maybe that could be a, a good way of getting this to be more scalable. It's like, guess what? You need to spend three months out of the year mentoring, or you need to take on an intern or, or, or whatever, a shadow. Uh, and then you have to have proof of that. They have to write a letter of recommendation for you <laughs> as a mentor. I think I that could it. actually work. I yeah, why it. not? Nothing's stopping us from doing that. We just have we to did, We did a it. conversation about should CISOs be licensed like pilots? Yep. Yeah, I remember right? that, that talk. So we actually had that talk and I did an entire pod podcast on it because I've, I know a lot of CISOs that are all pilots. <laughs> like there's, there's a, actually a pretty, pretty decent percentage of, of security folks who are pilots. And, and, you know, it's been kind of the idea of that conversation. Should we like how pilots are required every so often? I think it's, it's like every hundred hours they fly, they're required to spend like eight or 10 hours and in, in in a simulator, like just hmm. keeping their skills fresh. Mm -hmm. So, hmm. you know, you don't, you know, you, you're, you're, you're up to date on, on everything yep. and you don't get yep. worn out. Offsets yeah. the old doctor effect. Right. <laughs> that is interesting. Yeah. yeah. And how many yeah. deaths, how many deaths are due to doctor malpractice because they probably thought they knew it. Right. Yeah. Just outdated. Mm -hmm. um, next gen Naomi rocks. <laughs> <laughs> Karen says you need entry level positions. Never mind entry level professionals. Um, everybody's talking about you, Naomi, in your mirror mantra. I don't know what that is. I think when when you were kind of going off, when you were, when you went like, bang, bang, oh bang, bang, bang. my god, I'm so sorry. When you checked, yeah, I am just a little bit angry today, uh, and I don't As know why. Be. Yeah, <laughs> because because you know why. <laughs> Because we've been talking about this. Way I know it's like beating long. a drum. Um, so yeah, I mean, I try to have this happy, happy warrior mentality where like everything's gonna be fine. We just have to come together and like. But I, I'm human. Like I'm gonna reach the end of my rope, and I will give up because if I don't see a change in our culture and our community, I will just be like, screw it, someone else's problem. But I'm still trying to fight this good fight, and I can't do it alone. So thank you all three of you to help me out here. Well, we Thanks. are happy that you're here helping. Um, you know, I say this all the time. A, I was in HR for years, did a blip in IT for a year and was brought over by the CISO who I helped hire <laughs> to work in security. That's number one. And number two, so I don't, so anytime anyone says any crap about, oh, you can't train somebody, it's like, please, because I knew zip, zero, nothing. Like I was like, when I started recruiting, what is this? What does this mean? Can you sit here and explain this to me like I'm five years old? Like, I don't know what any of this stuff means. So to say that you can't train up people when all these other countries are training five, six and seven year olds to, to get into the basics of security and become, you know, gurus by the time they're 10, 12, 15, you know, 17. I totally debunk that. That's craziness. Mm -hmm. So I'm with you, Naomi, because yeah. we've been hearing this for way too long. Yeah, Hence, people are smart. People are but smart. But that's the difference. But that's the difference between managers and leaders. And mm -hmm. if we like look at people here who want to, who are maybe mentoring intern, maybe mentoring potential interns, or have kids that are looking to go into the industry, I think one big thing of this entire conversation is it's not only where you go to do it. So a lot of times you can go to a really big company, 
but you're working for a bunch of managers and you're not really, you don't have a lot of leaders in place. So you're not really getting the skills. You're making the money a little bit, but you're not getting the skills. You want to go be part of leaders, people who are going to empower you to go out there and, and do things. Even as an intern, we like to empower interns to be part of our stand-up calls and throw in ideas and be part of the conversation and not just sit there in the corner and take notes because I don't want them to take notes. I want them to be an active part of the team because that's how I know if they're going to be a really good employee and I'm going to extend the job offer to them or if I'm going to write them a letter of recommendation and have them try their luck somewhere else in the marketplace. Right. And so there, there's that aspect to it of, you know, leaders. I mean, the whole idea of what, what brought upon this discussion is the mindset of a manager and someone who just sees the scope of their silo to leaders who see their desire to want to lead an organization and a team and be part of a, a greater good mission that understands that cyber is not a individual sport, but a team sport. And it's not a company sport. It's a, it's a community sport. And it's not just a community sport. It's a nation sport. Mm -hmm. And it's not just a nation sport. It's the difference between tyrants mm -hmm. and peace seekers. So mm -hmm. true. So true. Yeah. Zoe said, thanks for coming to Naomi's TED Talk. <laughs> when you were on your oh, gosh. Yeah. Okay, we could stop with those comments. Uh, <laughs> so I, I will say, uh, to add to James's point, the second most common question I get is, how do I break into leadership? And mm. how did you break into leadership? So here's an idea for you folks who are just engineers, not just engineers, but you would like to become leaders. So you want to move from an engineering role into a leadership role. Here's what you do. You convince somebody to take on an intern and you get practice being a leader for that intern. So you have that mentoring and that leadership, like just training that you can do. And at the same time, you bring up somebody in cybersecurity. Wow. What a great solution. Now you have that training that you want and you want that experience to be a manager or a leader that you want and you're helping somebody. It's a win-win. Go for it. It's really easy. Do it. And I'm going to add to that, that leadership is one of those, we talk about the things that are built in that you can't change, attitude, aptitude, et cetera, and then the things you can teach. I believe leadership is something that can be taught. Mm -hmm. I got an undergraduate degree majoring in liberal arts with a special focus in leadership. Every option I had for any class where I got to choose the subject matter, the subject matter was leadership. I've got probably 20 leadership books on my bookshelf in my office downstairs, and I have read every one of them. And it is amazing how much you can ingest on board and put into practice learning about leadership from those who've, who've done it before. Yep. Yep. All my Christmas presents were leadership books. I'm like, here's a list of 30 books that I want. Here you go. And I've been cranking through them. Same thing, Alan, same yep. thing. Yep. Yep. So Johnny says, agreed. It starts with leadership. That was right on target. Uh, Quithemba says, what happens after the internship? He's done the one-year internship. Company doesn't have the finances to keep him on. He's back in the market. Nobody will hire him because he only has one year cyber experience. This is my biggest fear where I am currently. Ah, uh, let me tell the story. The story of, I'm going to change his name to Timmy. Timmy the intern. He came to work for me uh, several companies ago. Um, came on as a still in school intern. We loved him. We gave him uh, a full year. He ended up still working with us now that he was graduated, continued with us. And when it came time to re-up for the second year, I wanted him. I wanted to keep him. And I told him, I want to keep going. I want to flip you to a full-time employee. And we did. And then we kept going. And it was time to look at what we wanted to do next. So now he had a year of internship and a year of employment under my belt. He ended up leaving me to go somewhere else that was paying him double what I could pay him. So the story is, dive in and do it. Don't worry about it. If you're doing a good job, they're going to want to keep you. And even if that's not going to work out, um, this guy managed to get double what I was paying him. So uh, just dive in and do it. That's my advice there. And I'll jump on the back of that story, Alan. I was working with a CISO two years ago. And all they wanted, because, because they were looking for entry-level talent and because we can hardly find, you know, we were looking for talent can't find, you know, couldn't find someone that had experience and wanted someone. He said, I'll, I'll take someone that has an internship. So again, you hire the person that was there with them, but you do a little internship and some other company says, I want someone that at least they have an internship. It's experience. And that's what people want. Yep. A leg up is a leg up, period. A leg up. 
So David says the spelling the intern quote interns are young students, adults returning for industry experience, training and undergrad or grad certificates, finishing the program, coming out as student ready to hire. Mm -hmm. Again, good comment. There's something to be said for being hungry. Those that truly want in will show it, but they will only make it in if more, if the more experienced people give them a chance. Absolutely. Uh, David says, I would say there are some personalities despite age that are hungry for knowledge and their drive makes them solid candidates. The challenge is identifying them. Oh, I think you can find that in an interview. I think you can suss that out in an interview. Mm -hmm. I absolutely do. This is part of my attitude aptitude byline is I'm looking for that hunger and absolutely I can find it. Mm -hmm. Joseph says here, um, I admire the initiative to invest in the people. Internship is a learning curve and opportunity to learn and make mistakes in a controlled space and get corrected. We always say the human factor is the weakest link. If we don't invest in exposing young people to cybersecurity through industry oriented training programs, i.e. internships, we will continue to be the weakest link in cybersecurity. In my experience, interns are likely to stay when they feel the organization is showing willingness to something else. I don't know, but that was an awesome comment. <laughs> Uh, Zoe, the janitor was playing 007. You know it, a PhD 007. <laughs> so. Knew what would like to look for in the papers. Mm -hmm. Was sifting them live in real time and like keep mm -hmm. these two and throw these two out. Mm -hmm. Yes, 007 janitor. Totally. Mm -hmm. That's such an insider threat. Ooh, juicy. I know someone looking for an internship this summer. He's a junior with a, in a BS in cyber program. Um, hit me up on LinkedIn. Hit up Alan. Are there any internships that are that are after hours and weekends. I love to get into one, but work full time. Dang, there should be. I hadn't thought about doing that. I work after hours and weekends as well as regular hours. So why not? Um, there are everyone with everyone working remote. There should be no reason why mm -hmm. this can't yeah. be something that's, that's taken place. Right I could, now. I could work with that. I could work yeah. with that. And I, I had spoken to someone, um, I want to say a year or so ago that was doing some, something like that. Uh, it wasn't, and I can't remember exactly where, but I think this kind of stuff is out there. So um, Eric says, although through the various disciplines, quote, managers have to actively participate in shaping and sharpening the interns' perceptions, I've pilfered interns just because they like my management style. Key in development of interns is shadowing to allow them to absorb soft skills. Naomi, talk yeah, about the the word soft skills is kind of outdated. I think I'd rather use human skills. I think somebody posted something on my wall about that. I'm like, oh, I really like that term. It's just how to be a good human. It's like how to influence and persuade, how to build relationships and trust. Everything starts with trust. It's cybersecurity is about people. If you can influence other people, you have will have done your job well. Yep. Okay, Nelson says, I may miss a two-week vacation in Hawaii with my wife and kids this summer because I'm hoping an internship will open up for me. I would be thrilled to miss the beach to get a chance to get my foot in the door. Amen. Amen. Right, Nelson. How about someone transitioning from a different field? Yep. It's back to what we talked about. You've got all these basics already under your belt, right? I don't have to teach you how to, how to send an appropriate email. I don't have to teach you how to communicate with the customer. You've already got that stuff. Cool. Makes it even easier to onboard you. Yeah, totally. I know it's um we're at the top of the hour. Can we go through or is it time to shut I can keep out? going. All right. I've got a few more Naomi. minutes. Say a few more minutes. A couple minutes because I want to get through this. So many good comments. Obviously, this hit a, a nerve. <laughs> um, Cedric says, I will try to hire some interns while building a business. I can teach them and help them build a career while they help build a company. So true. that's what AJ Yon's doing. Mm -hmm. David says, agreed. There's no shortage of, of people who just want a chance to learn, grow, and prove themselves. Um, Kali Kailesh says, I'm sorry, I missed some of the call, but wants to know if we cover H1B dependency reduction in, um, internships. So mm -hmm. we haven't, and that's a whole different, you know, kind of a space. Um, Eric, the moral of James's story is that everyone is a form of intern at various times through their career. So true. So, so true. Goodness, there's a lot of comments. Okay, David says, incidentally, I asked those questions before Alan said, get in touch. We are, I definitely will do so. Um, so get in on the same level. Yes. Word. So, Eric says, some of the time being that transitioning form of intern is called bro probation. Mm. Um, well, CISSP encourages contributions to the community. Example, writing a paper in a subject matter, matter area. This is encouraged to maintain the certification. Right, but not required. Right. And that's what Kyla says. Yeah, is, yeah. yeah. there you go. Requirements. Yeah. Most of the systems don't have education or certifications. I don't know. That's not true. I think most yeah. systems do. Yeah. Um, yeah. I got all mine after the fact. You, you can't even get a um, 
an interview for a CISO job today without at least without it. Yeah. Yeah. I got, I got my master's, which was in InfoSec. Again, undergrad was liberal arts. I got that after I was a CISO. I was the only CISO in the program. Everyone was yeah, like, but how hey, long man, ago was here? that though? The, how long ago um, was that? Four or five years ago now? I don't think masters of cybersecurity really happened until like two years ago. I feel like they just popped out. Okay. No, I don't remember they, yeah. seeing them five years ago. Years. No, they were. Some of the bigger them. universities were offering them. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I got, yeah, I got mine four or five years ago okay. now, I think. I think that's right. Eric, uh, says there's not a requirement, I think, for CISSP, but encouragement for community engagement. Fair enough. Sean says, I had to print hundreds of papers exploring and learning cyber while my laptop was out of commission. <laughs> that is someone yeah. who's hungry to learn. Someone gets yeah. shown an internship. Print it out. It's funny, the federal government has had leadership interning for federal employees for decades. Exactly. Good. That's how they Good. bring everyone in through internship <sighs> programs. That's how I started. I was in the government as, as an intern. Yes, I was. Oh, the government. Well, the <laughs> U.S. Army, James. The U.S. The Army. It's all, a little different. U.S. Army. <laughs> is it possible to break into leadership directly without technical roles? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Yes. Um, a lot of people come from, like, the big four accounting consulting firms. They tend to make their transition, and they may not be super technical. I've seen that a lot. Uh, Johnny says, how about leaders that want to transfer to tech? Hmm, that's the other side of it. Yeah, we still need, we still need middle, like Naomi said so eloquently in her TED Talk, we're missing middle management. That's the part. A yeah. ton of middle management. You don't need to have the technical skills sometimes because I can teach you technical. I can have you go take an AWS, you know, security certification and 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 invest in getting you mm -hmm. up to speed on the technical side. But I need someone who's able to motivate and hold the team accountable to to get to their goals. Uh, by the way, cybersecurity community on LinkedIn loves Naomi's cause, and they were in the comments showing it. Yes. Oh yeah, we I jumped in on that one. Yeah, we all. Yeah, are. I appreciate that. <laughs> I really felt the love. We that was like, really what? nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and to be fair, and we haven't named the detractor, and that's that's good. Let's keep it that way. But but uh, that person has contributed a lot and been very positive and added a lot of value to my LinkedIn experience over the last couple of years. So, you know, uh, for, forgive you know. Forgive any trespass kind of thing and, and differences of opinion be what they are. I, I still feel like even if it wasn't the best start to a conversation, it led to a conversation. Yes. And, and I think well, that, that piece was, was positive, too. And I think that was the ultimate goal. And I'll, I'll be I'll be honest with you. I think there are a lot of people like him um, that believe that this is like either difficult or hard to do. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, I have a little bit of a theory because especially CISOs in particular are so overworked and so stretched so thin that adding on another thing where you really have to create this space is, um, you know, it's difficult. It, it's difficult when you're, it's on top of many other things that are priorities. So I kind of get what he's saying because if he, if he wasn't, there would be just more internship programs out there. So it is a really good conversation. It's just sucky. Yep. Yes. But how many hours did he spend on LinkedIn answering comments? He could have spent that time building up an intern. <laughs> Damn, son! Damn. <laughs> Should we just shut it down? Should we just close? Hang on, right, hang on, hang on. Everyone's getting a T-shirt that says "The Intern Starts Tuesday" with a mic drop. Done. <laughs> oh lordy, 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 lordy! I felt like that was the ultimate mic drop. Just stop everything now. <laughs> yeah, we're done. Oh, that, Show's that over. Mic drop. I don't think I could go any further, <laughs> folks. We'll be back next week. We can continue this conversation because obviously there's tons to talk about when it comes to it. But that's the mic drop. I mean, that's it. That's I, it. Naomi nailed it. Yeah. This, 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 this. <laughs> Naomi's on fire today. What's going on? Oh, gosh. Yeah. 20 years of pent up rage, James. <laughs> you know, now, now you understand what a lot of the frustration is for so many people in cybersecurity, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Is as a community, we're trying to better our industry. And then we see stuff like this. And if you're from the outside looking in, if you're not a cybersecurity professional, if this was your first, maybe the first time you saw something around cyber and mm -hmm. that was it, just setback. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. There's a paranoia inherent to our game that we have to always keep in mind is contrary. You know, the, 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 closeness of the mission can't be allied with the closeness of welcoming folks into the fold, right? That's that's where the bifurcation has to be that a lot of us miss, I think. And I think that's really the sum there. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Naomi, you want to 
Last words. Last words. Be kind. That's all. Treat others like you would like to be treated. It's very simple. Yeah. That's all. That's all. Simple so easy. Do. Simple to do. Mm-hmm. Okay, folks. Well, thank you all for an awesome episode of Breaking into Cybersecurity CISO Thursday. That was a good one. This was a good one. We'll be back next week. Same time, same place. Thanks, guys. Cheers, everyone.